There's something called the broken window theory, alternatively the parable of the broken window, probably best known in popular culture being referenced in the film The Fifth Element. However, the theory itself is over 150 years old. But what is the broken window theory and what issues does it highlight? It's based upon the idea that an act of destruction, like that of a window being broken, doesn't stimulate an economy by creating economic activity and replacing or rebuilding the object that was destroyed, like, say, a window. Part of the logic against a broken window stimulating the economy is that it doesn't increase the amount of money available to be spent in the economy. Instead, it just diverts the available money, the money spent replacing the broken window, could have been spent training staff, buying new machinery for a business. The original parable, the cost involved in the replacement of a broken window means the person can't buy much needed replacement for their worn out shoes. The money in the economy has just been diverted from the shoemaker to the glazier. Then the question arises, which, what would become of glaziers if no windows were broken? Now, this question presupposes, however, that there are a fixed number of glaziers and that glaziers couldn't be employed in some other sector of the economy if there were fewer broken windows. The number of glaziers employed is reflected by the amount of work there is for glaziers to do. So, if there's less work for them to do, they could be employed as fishermen or shoemakers or in any other sector of the economy. Redeployment of these glaziers means that the new work they're doing adds to the economic output of the area and so boosts the economy and the total wealth being generated. What may also be overlooked is that if the glazier wasn't replacing the broken window, they might instead have been installing a new window. So rather than the broken window stimulating the economy, they might well be delaying useful actions in the economy. So does this mean that all destruction is bad for an economy? And the answer isn't that transparent, as it assumes that a broken window or other structure is replaced with one of an identical composition, and this isn't likely to be the case. And at the very least, the replacement will be newer and in better condition. However, the replacement is also likely to incorporate any changes in technology and design since the original was installed. In case of window, this could be better insulation properties, tougher glass, or even glass which can adapt to different light conditions. Now, the destruction of large parts of towns or cities from fires, earthquakes, or other natural or even man-made disasters often results in them being rebuilt and even redesigned to a far superior standard than they were before. This can provide a long-term boost to the general economy that wouldn't have been available under normal conditions. However, in order for these improved conditions to take place, the economy has to be able to pump substantial funds and effort into rebuilding the damaged area. If these aren't available, there might be temporary structures erected which are then slowly replaced by a haphazard rebuilding, all of which generally results a major drag on the economy, rather than just a boost. So it appears that a broken window theory may be significantly more involved than it first appears.